legal fiction that when people create dossiers on you, that that is something that is really owned by Apple or by Google or by AT&T. It's not. It's not. That's a legal fiction created by the Supreme Court to get around our Fourth Amendment protections. And we need to understand what that is. And we need to understand that when you've got law enforcement people saying things like, um, uh, the company implemented the measure so that it could no longer comply with the judicial search warrants that make the work possible. He says, iPhones are now the first computer products in American history beyond the reach of lawful warrants. That's not true. He says, the result is crimes will go unsolved. Victims are left uh, beyond the protection of law. And he goes on to point out, uh, and of course, he didn't say this, but a senator said, now we can expect that Apple, Google, and Facebook will become the preferred messaging services of child pornographers, drug traffickers, and terrorists alike. <laughs> because, of course, they're the only ones who want privacy, right? Is that right? If you want privacy, you are a terrorist, you are a drug dealer or something. We should ask why the government demands privacy so much. Why? Their security, their privacy, their confidentiality, their secrets are so important that they will trash all of our rights, all of our property. Maybe they are drug dealers. Maybe they are the uh, terrorists. And we know, in fact, that they are. That is a sad thing. And it gets even sadder. We see that Ted Cruz, it was even implied in the debate that he should be investigated. That's the kind of McCarthyism that we see coming from Marco Rubio, somebody who pushes an unbridled, uncontrolled surveillance state. That's the kind of McCarthyism we're headed down with this kind of insane security state. Now, when we come back, we're going to have Alex Jones breaking down the most recent revelations from Seymour Hersh, backing up everything we have said about ISIS being a creation of the U.S. military. The Federal Reserve is a private banking cartel. The yeah, Fed is a sometimes very independent uh, organization. What should be the proper relationship between the chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? The Federal Reserve is an independent agency. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. They print our money and then loan it to us at interest. The IRS is their collection agency. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. Jeff Duncan says he saw IRS special agents using semi-automatic rifles at a gun range. Now he wants answers to why the agency needs that type of firepower. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. Know your history and you will know your enemy. Infowars.com I'm not gonna sit here and take it anymore. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which I've never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Your agency was saying, quote, the Salafists, the Muslim Brotherhood and Al Qaeda in Iraq are the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. Mm -hmm. In 2012, the US yeah. was helping coordinate arms transfers to those same groups. Why did you not stop that? It was a decision. I think it was a willful decision. A willful decision to go support an insurgency that had Salafists, Al Qaeda well, and Muslim Brotherhood. A willful decision to do what they're doing, which, which you have to, really, you'd have to really ask the president, what is it that he actually is doing that was General Michael Flynn several months ago on Al Jazeera talking about the fact that President Obama gave them orders to basically build up ISIS and Al Qaeda and that that was the set policy. And the interviewer says, oh, you mean they didn't know what was happening? He says, no, they consciously told us to do that. Well, this is the information we had three years ago from military, high level and low level, giving us the same information and the fact that General Dempsey, on the eve of airstrikes against Syria, went to the White House and said the military from the brass on down are not going to be Al-Qaeda's Air Force. And we saw Senator Ted Cruz go public, we saw Senator Rand Paul go public and make similar statements that, that our military and our people do not want to be Al-Qaeda's Air Force. Now since then we've had the schizophrenic or helter-skelter or oxymoronic policy is a better term of Turkey and other countries funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra and the West giving them weapons, tow missiles, stinger missiles, you name it, Hillary Clinton namely. Benghazi was just one part of that. It's ongoing. At the same time that the United States military and CENTCOM has been giving intel to the Russians, giving intel to the Syrians, giving intel uh, to other people that are actually fighting ISIS. Now. We've known this. We've had CIA whistleblowers on like Tosh Plumley. We've had Colonel Schaefer on to talk about it. InfoWars has been at the very forefront of exposing it. But now, in a review of Seymour Hersh, the two-time Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, his new book, Military to Military, a London Review of Books, it's also in other publications like New Yorker, have excerpts of his new book interviewing other generals, as well as Flynn, breaking all this down. I mean, this is incredible. And mainstream media almost spins it like it's not a counter coup happening with the military saying no to treason arming al-Qaeda and ISIS. But that's what it is. And so then the State Department separately, just as Tosh Plumley exposed three years ago, 
has to use its import-export power to order weapons transfers that's even above the Pentagon and the CIA. The military may have its problems and, and certainly you know, aren't perfect, but they don't want to arm al-Qaeda to murder every Christian group uh, in Syria. They don't want to overthrow our allies, Egypt, and put the Muslim Brotherhood in that's al-Qaeda light. They understand this is directly against America's interest and it's a war crime. And again, it doesn't even help our country or even our own elites. Why are they doing this? Well, the argument is if Assad's an enemy of the West, even though he tried to help us on 9-11 and other events, but still is his terrorist, if he's a supposed enemy, take him down regardless. But you don't take him down and then put people in that are 50 times worse. So there's a major fight going on for the heart and soul of America. And I gotta tell you, I'm always hearing this talk about let's have a military coup, let's stop the globalists that way. Military coups almost always turn out worse than what you already had. But with the situation in World War II in 1944, when the German high command knew that what Hitler was doing was gonna destroy Germany, that they'd lose millions of more people, that the Soviets were gonna occupy them, that the Russians were gonna come in, they moved to eliminate Hitler. Now, I'm not saying anybody should go after Obama because he's just a puppet, but the neocon globalist groups that he represents and the Clintons and others are steering this country towards World War III, not just in Syria, but in Ukraine against Russia. They are a clear and present danger. And I can only liken what's happening to a soft Valkyrie or a soft counter coup, because it's not a coup. We already have foreign globalist corporate hedge fund interest and their front people, who aren't even military, playing with stuff that could cause World War III very easily. And it's our own military that's usually pushing for war in the days of Curtis LeMay wanting nuclear war with the Russians and L.L. L. Emmitzer. Usually I'm like, let's have the statesmen hold back some of the war hawks at the Pentagon. It's the war hawks at the Pentagon, time and time again, quietly trying to stop what is leading, most analysts say, towards a larger confrontation with Russia that could easily lead to thermal nuclear war. They call the Cold War World War III. So really, this is World War IV, a hot war that we're on the verge of. And World War I started in proxy wars. World War II started in that as well. We are going down a very, very dangerous path. But the good news is the globalists have gone too far. They've jumped the shark. I mean, it takes a lot of nerve. They've got to think we're really stupid to try to openly overthrow all these Middle Eastern countries, including our allies, create failed states in places like Libya and Syria. And then Hillary gets in the Democratic debates two weeks ago and says, oh, you know, Libya and Syria are right where they're supposed to be, a failed state, breaking them up in pieces and then giving part of it to the radical Wahhabist out of Saudi Arabia. That is working with terrorists. That is opening the door to them. And that brings us into part two of this. Why would they bring in millions of jihadis, invaders out of Syria, people that came in to invade Syria into Europe, hundreds of thousands in the U.S., knowing they're going to attack? Well, they think we're so stupid that when the jihadis do attack, they'll take our guns, our liberties, our freedoms, instead of stopping the flow of the folks that are attacking us. They're going to use this threat. And MSNBC, The Morning Joe, just today, came out and said, don't worry about the Islamic threat. Worry about white gun owners, they're the big crime rate. Despite the fact, and we'll show some of these on screen, crime rates are down over 50 plus percent since 1991, and white males consist of the lowest crime rate of any male group. Look it up for yourself. But oh, there's an epidemic of white males killing everyone. This is an inversion of reality. You're telling was, Muslim well, Americans they all need to come out and talk about the tiny percentage of, of their community that has kind of, quite frankly, wreaked havoc. But yet, you look at the data of white men with guns wreaking havoc on this country. Why aren't white men all coming forward? I, I Why don't actually, you call on them to do that? I, I, I mean, actually am doing on. a lot of things. And finally, in the hypocrisy department, Hillary Clinton during the Democratic debate this weekend said that Donald Trump's being used in ISIS recruiting videos. The entire media checked it, it's not true. Turns out the Clintons are being used in ISIS recruiting videos. Turns out the Clintons have been giving weapons through Benghazi to ISIS and on other occasions. So this shows how dumb they think we are. Hillary out Brian Williams, Brian Williams years ago, claiming that she'd been in Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, and had been shot at in the air, shot at on the ground, and then they cut to the CBS footage, nothing happened that day when she got off the tarmac onto the red carpet. She's a liar. 
So why is she allowed to blame Donald Trump for ISIS when out of everybody that's involved in this, she, as the head of the State Department, literally quarterbacked the operation? What difference at